Hi, welcome to the bathtub. This is the master bather, Scott Bradfield, and this week we're uh, we're, we're we're probably we're trying treading dangerous waters, but that's kind of what we do in the bathtub, isn't it? We tread we tread danger we we, we tread dangerously. Um, I'm thinking that maybe we should have a we should start a kind of a because people, you know, many of us are older and wiser. We've learned we've learned to read in the bathtub through experience. But a lot of little kids don't know how to read in the bathtub. They think they should be playing with toys, or they should, you know, they're supposed to be getting clean or wash their hair. So I was thinking we could even. Th I'm not going to make this big decision yet, but we might even start an adjunct, like a young bathers international bather society, because you know there's a lot of five, six, seven year old kids that really should be unproductively reading in the bathtub who probably don't even know you're supposed to do this. So anyway, there's 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 the uh, the great uh, uh, B.K. Uh, Smith's uh, picture up on the wall over there next to the Godfather, which is exactly where it should be. And I just wanted to show you, remind you that we're we're we're, uh, we're unproductively seeking new members to our free lifetime uh, universe-wide membership to the International Bathing Society. All you need to do is is write a little reply to any of my videos and say, "Tub me up, tub me up, Master Bather," and give me a location and any nom de plume you want. And I'll put you in. For, I'll put you on the map, and you will be famous forever. And you can put a bathing buddy on there. Anybody you want is a bathing buddy. Mine's Boris Johnson. You might want Mitch McConnell. You might want uh, uh, Michelle Obama. You might want to put anybody up there you want. But uh, you just remember, it's free. It's worthless, and it's not going to be around forever. Okay? Unlike myself. So this week I thought we talked about the the Wizard of Oz. Which, which I guess you know you don't read, as adults you could read this in the bathtub and I have actually been reading some of the Oz books in the bathtub over the past few weeks because I wrote a piece about my long lifelong um, enjoyment of the Oz books which I'm going to pr provide a link to below. The um, most of you know the Wizard of Oz, and I was a kid it was a big deal you know before we had all the movies. It was the one. It was colorized. It was on, it was, on, it was cut. That was color. It was full color movie. It was Technicolor, probably or one of those colors, and it was on television. And it was once a year, and we would all rush home to see it. It was like it was the big spectacular television program, and uh, uh, I, I I enjoyed those movies. But I had already been reading the Oz books, so I was a little deflated by the actual Wizard of Oz, which is not a particularly good picture of the world that Baum created in these books. Um, this is uh, so. So anyway, what we're going to say is, is that you could read these in the, in the bathtub, but you might want to get some copies for your young children who haven't learned to read in the bathtub yet, and, and uh, get them some of these old books. Um, I'll go through some of them in a minute, but there's a lot of kind of secondhand cheap. Uh, not, they're kind of uh, rip-off editions of the old original books, which are really beautiful. If you see any editions of the original uh, editions of the uh, of the Oz books. When when uh, what was his name? O'Neill was doing the illustrations, and they were illustrating the entire volume. I'll show you in a minute. Anyway, here is this one of the annotated books. It's very hard to read this in the bathtub. It's it's a kind. Of, I can't get rid of the book. It has all these beautiful plates. It's well, it's well. Uh, it's annotated, so you have more annotations than you have text sometimes. The annotations are all very responsible, very useful, and I try to skip them every time I, I read this book. But you kind of can't get rid of it because that's a beautiful book. They've uh, also, have they color coordinated this one? I don't know what they did. Anyway, the, um, it gives you some idea. It doesn't actually produce, it doesn't reproduce the actual book. Now, that's the original illustrations for the Cowardly Lion, and his name was. Denslow, W. W. Denslow, and many people consider him the, one of the geniuses of the Oz, Oz books. I've never. There's some of the beautiful work that they did. That just reproduced, of course, but when they overlaid illustrations or overlaid text on the illustrations, and almost every page would have marginal pictures and lots of marginal illustrations. And different co and full color plates and the original book is beautiful. Uh, the the original book is is sort of like the movie, and Baum went on to write many. I, I I'll attach something about Baum's life. He went on to write many other books, dozens and dozens and dozens of books under many different names. And the only one that really kind of caught the public imagination and became really successful was that Oz book. So eventually he came back a few years later and wrote The Land of Oz. Now these are one of the books I read when I was a kid that really, I read these before I read The Wizard of Oz. The Land of Oz uh, is a great 
book. It's a real great read, particularly if you're five or six years old when I read them. Now, this is a cheap, uh, you could almost call it a knockoff, Konecki and Koneski or somebody did this kind of cheap for the, you know, for the for the remainder for the remainder shops like Crown that used to do all those, uh, um, uh, you know, remainder books that were produced for the remainder shelves, and uh, but it does do a fairly good job of showing what the books were originally like. Because if you get the original ones, you would take the jacket off, and there would be a, a reproduction of the illustrations on the actual book. The plates in this are actually put into the text roughly as they were in the in the book itself. And this is the second illustrator, O'Neill. Is that O'Neill? Who's I still I grew up because I grew up reading these. You just get these great end papers with the illustrations of all the characters, Ozma and and, and Betsy Bobbins maybe in one of her cats. Uh, Dorothy's not in the second book. The, the second book's the hero is a boy named a boy named Tip. Who goes through a sex a sex change through the in the, the, the one point of the book because it turns out it's Ozma. I'm sorry, so I'm, I'm telling the adults. Don't tell your kids, but it turns out it's a girl. And it's a, his adventure with Jack Pumpkinhead. And there's actually a terrifying version of the Land of Oz done by I forget who the director was now, but uh, Frank uh, I think it was Frank Oz might have been involved with it. Anyway, it was a, it's called the Return to Oz about Dorothy going into a mental institution where they want to give her shock treatment. It's a brilliant and frightening version of some of the uh, uh, more interesting Oz books. Land of Oz, terrific read. I, I, re I read this again recently to write the piece. I still enjoyed it. I read all of these books with my son. I read them all out loud when he was a little, just like I read a lot of these with my mother when I was a little kid or read them by myself. And there's just so many different characters. They're just somehow, they're, they really do just entrance you as a child. Here's the first one I ever read. My mother gave me this for Christmas. I write about this. And it was sort of similar edition, The Patchwork Girl of Oz. It's a very late book when when when, uh, when uh, Baum tries to push Oz off the Reichenbach Falls several times. And eventually he says, oh, hell, it's the only book that sells. And when he moved to California and Hollywood, he started producing these pretty quickly, pretty regularly, one a year. But Patchwork of Girl of Oz was one of the first I ever read and still one of my favorites and, and possibly my favorite of all the series. Again, the uh, these I'm pretty sure these Morrow editions, reprints, are, must be still around. And they do try to be more faithful in giving you a sense of what the original books looked like. That's even in late editions are expensive now. And again, they'll do the. They'll try to reproduce the way the jackets looked in the old uh, hard cardboard uh, copies. And uh, I, I would recommend if you get these, don't get the ones without the prop, the original, the original layouts or original illustrations. There's lots of cheap paperback versions of these books. You don't want them. They just the magic is partly the way the books are just sort of illustrated everywhere. Ballantine did a love. Remember the great Ballantine books we talked about? They reproduced these almost as paperbacks without the covers, with all the marginal illustrations, as I recall, and possibly not the, the color plates. But even those are wor more worth getting than don't get the cheap things. Don't get, you know, you can get some, there's some, if your kids are reading Kindles and you get the colorized, the color Kindle, there's fairly inexpensive editions uh, of the old. Uh, Old Oz books, which have been fairly well translated to Kindle. That's how I recall it. Uh, make sure they have all the illustrations, the original illustrations. So the Patchwork Girl of Oz, they're almost always quest novels. So the, you know, central boy, little boy or little girl goes off to do some magic or to save somebody or to get back home. And then they meet a whole series of characters, sometimes recurring characters. Um, the wizard, again, the wizard comes back eventually. He shows back in Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. Which is a really creepy one. I, I just reread this again, and it creeped me out when I was a kid. They go into the center of the earth, and they meet some of the darker, uh, the darker characters in Baum's imagination. He actually had a little trouble with this book because you have uh, it's a much darker book and much more nightmarish imagery. Most of the stuff is extremely kid friendly. There's there's no violence that I recall. There's <sighs> Little in the way of frightening passages. There, there are a few scary passages. I think it's Ozma of Oz when you have the woman who takes her head off and is, it has lots of heads in her house and is replacing her heads. But most of the stuff any little kid is going to enjoy.
uh, The Road to Oz. I've got the whole set downstairs somewhere. And you pass them on to my son, and you know, he can have it for his kids. Uh, I, I had a lot of these from my mother. They, uh, uh, which I wish I had the original editions. She read all these when she with her grandmother. They're they're sort of a they're tradition in many families. They're terrific reads. Uh, I have sort of mixed feelings about the Oz books as I get older, and I try to cover those in my essay, which I, I'm quite proud of. So I'll put that on here if you're interested. But you know, as far as maybe we'll start a Young Bathers Alliance, and then uh, you know maybe get some books that the kids can take into the bathtubs or some you know or waterproof Kindles. You know those those Kindles, don't they? I don't like to I don't like to promote damn Amazon, but. You know, I drop my Kindle in the tub many times. It just floats. It's fine. So maybe uh, that's a way to get the kids reading in the bathtub. All right. Well, happy bathing. And uh, any young bathers, this is a good place to start. Get some get some Oz books. Go in the bathtub. Uh, soap. Get some big suds going. And, and just read for about a half hour, you know, and, and, uh, and, and become clean in the process. That's part of it. But that's, like, the less important part of bathing. You can take it from... from uh, from the, the master baby. Okay. Bye-bye.